Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters Business, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Coming Off to Apply. All right, so I have David Cassenti on the line, and he's the owner and also tutor specialist over at CAS Educational Services. Uh, David, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, David, so I'm uh, excited to get into today's topic, so we'll talk about a new paradigm in education, and you do have a unique uh, vantage point working in, in your field, so uh, we'll get into that, but before we do, um, how about you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing over at CAS Educational Services? Well... I, I started CAPS Educational Services about 10 years ago um, when I was teaching in the public school system. And I, I've worked with students on the autism spectrum, nonverbal learning disabilities, all sorts of new, in, unique learning steps. And so I started um, CAPS in order to work with these kids and help them understand the material in a smaller setting and outside of the school setting where a lot of them have difficulty and they, they look down on what on themselves and how what they can accomplish. So we we were I work with students that I I work with them in their unique learning style. So I see how they learn and I help them understand the material in that way. Um, since COVID began I've been working I've been doing my tutoring for free um, because with a lot of students being online only, it's been even more difficult for the teachers and for the students and parents. So I've been doing my tutoring for free for the past 12, 15 months or so. Mm. So how, and, and speaking of this, I think it's a, gr a great transition. So a new, a new a paradigm in education, I mean, what are you seeing and what are some of the changes that are um, that you're seeing? Okay, um, well, I've been seeing a lot of states have been moving, oh, well, about 10 years ago, a lot of states were moving the Common Core state standards. Um, in Connecticut, where I am, they, they adopted those Common Core standards for the state of Connecticut. And it, it was very difficult for the schools because they dropped it on the, school, on the teachers and said, okay, this is the way you need to teach now. And they didn't train them, they didn't help them figure it out, so there was a large learning curve for the educators. Um, and so Common Core has gotten to the point where it's, we're going to teach these kids th and this way to do the material, and then we're going to teach them this new way, and we're going to teach them this new way. So by the time that they're done, these kids have like 17 different methods to solve a math problem, and so they get them confused, and it's and it's just been the past decades been like that. A lot of kids struggling with the way things are taught, and a lot of them learn in their own unique ways. I mean, we're all different. So I've been seeing kids struggling, and so students I work with, I say, okay, what do you understand? How do you understand this math material? And I've been noticing that they're they're giving me their understanding, and then I'm helping them figure out how to work through it in their way, rather than the unique, way, the specific way that the school taught them. I've been saying, okay, here's 
how you do it using your strengths. Now, here's what the teacher was trying to get you to do. And so I'm comparing and helping them understand the analogy between what they understand and what the school's been trying to teach. And so, it's not sustainable. So I can see that. Like, it's, it's hard enough to learn it the first way, but then to have multiple different ways and then uh, and then to have those you know, competing um, views, that has to be pretty difficult for the kids, right? Yeah, it, it, it's really difficult. And, and it's been leading to a lot of um, students getting down on themselves because they don't get it. Or they'll get something wrong and then they'll just stop. So... So what do you now that uh, obviously the, the COVID has COVID has changed things with people with online learning and and you know kids not necessarily in school or part time or like learning pods. I mean, how do you see all of this playing a role into where we go forward in education? Well, with learning pods, um, that's been a big it it it's been a big player, and I've seen that, and in some places they call them micro schools schools for 10 to 20 students of unique ways of learning, and so it's been very tailored to them. Um, oh, are you still there? Yep. Button on my, <laughs> my dashboard. Hello? Um, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so I've been seeing a lot of these smaller groups that learn much better because they're able to, for example, in a, in a pod or in a micro school, they're able to learn it in their own way. Um, and so same thing with online learning. Kids will learn, will hear what they're supposed to be hearing and learn mm. it outside. Mm. They'll be able to access information on the internet and they'll say, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. And so it, it's been really a unique, and I, I've looked at these things opening up in education that haven't been allowed before. Mm. So what, what do you find interesting right now that's going on in education, just in general? What, what interests you? The, the big thing is these micro schools. Um, micro schools have come up, um, and they're designed for those small groups of students that all learn in similar ways. So that's the biggest, that's the most interesting thing I've seen. And I've seen some states moving towards that kind of model, away from the big district schools and to the smaller micro school settings. No, that's awesome. So, David, um, I have to tell you, it's been um, great having you on the show today. I definitely wanted to get your views on education, what was going on, what you're seeing from your vantage point, and, again, this new paradigm that we're all, you know, entering into um, now with, of course, these micro schools and other things that you mentioned. Um, that being mm -hmm. said, though, if somebody is listening to this and they want to connect with you and they want to learn more about your tutoring services and uh, and what you're doing, um, find Final question, two-part question. Um, number one, okay. um, what are what are typically the right types of students or um, curriculums that are a good fit to work with you? Um, and then number two, what's the best way for people to reach out and to, and to connect? Well, the best students to work with me are those that are having difficulty in a traditional in their traditional setting. So I've worked with students on the autism spectrum, nonverbal learning disabilities. I've worked with students with dyslexia, math phobia, because they need somebody that can see, work with them individually or in a small group. And so that's the kind of student that I really love working with. Mm -hmm. um, and so they can always, if, 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 there's, if a parent or a student is like that, you know, they can always they can reach out to me. So I have a website. Um, it's cats, C A T S hyphen, minus sign, I N C dot com. Um, and the information's there. Um, my my uh, cell phone number, my email address is all in there. So they can always get in touch with me. Um, 
my email is Dave, D-A-V-E, at cats-inc.com. And so it's really easy. Awesome. Well, David, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great work that you're doing over at CAST Educational Services. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget, hit that uh, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to be a return listener or visitor. Um, and, David, uh, thank you again for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me.